我觉得他是让我几十年的教育得到了奇耻大辱。这个是什么？你们看清楚一点。月亮纸上洗衣液。哦，我操！月亮纸上。The year of 2018 could be regarded as the beginning of the golden age of short video in China. Many emerging short video-based social media apps, such as TikTok, have gradually challenged the monopoly position of traditional social media platforms such as Weibo and WeChat in China. In meanwhile. These short video-based social media platforms have emerged and quickly become one of the most popular and efficient approaches for Chinese consumers to retrieve their legitimate rights and urge the reformation of governmental regulation on specific markets. The consumer video activism means a practice where consumers use their smartphone to record their moment of consumer rights infringement, then upload these short videos to different short video-based. Social media platforms for drawing the public, mainstreams, and related governmental departments' attentions and supports to their misfortunes. In this video, we will mainly focus on three representative cases of consumer video activism in China. The first case: tearful protest on Mercedes hood. 六十六块买个穿衣，一公里没开，让我们快发动机还被国际公司三包，跟我的回答就是三包，我没开出门啊，大哥。On April 11, 2019, a short video about a female consumer's tearful protest on the hood of a Mercedes car has gone viral on various short video-based social media platforms. Consumer Wang purchased a Mercedes car at the Mercedes-Benz car dealership in Xi'an. Called Listar. Unfortunately, on the day of picking up the car on March 27, Wang found that her car driving computer issued an alarm signal for engine oil leakage. On April 9, after two weeks of negotiating with the Listar, Wang chose to protest in the car showroom and demand compensation. Her tearful protest was recorded by a bystander and uploaded to several short video-based social media platforms. And this short video has gone viral instantly. During the communications with her anonymous friends and supporters online, Wang was told that she had been charged for an improper financial service fee of 2,200 U.S. dollars. It irritated Wang further. She started to accuse the Li Star for charging the unwarranted charge. In just four days later, on April 13, this drama video has successfully attracted the attentions of the Chinese mainstream media and the local government departments. But this was not the end of the story. The short video of Wang's tearful protest on the car hood of Mercedes-Benz. Was captured by the international news agencies such as the Washington Post. On the same day, under the triple pressures of public attention, media reports, and involvement of relevant government departments, Mercedes-Benz China issued a public apology finally and said that it has sent the commissioner to Xi'an to help Wang solve the problem. On April 16, Mercedes-Benz China. Confirmed that Xi'an dealership Li Star had reached a final compensation agreement with Wang. With the assistance of this drama short video, Wang finally retrieved her compensation she should have. The second case is about the Chengdu homeowner protest. As you can see, this short video here is about the Chengdu homeowner protest scene. This case happened on 26 June 2018. The root cause of this protest is simple and clear: the housing decoration qualities that offered by the real estate companies did not conform with the contract, 
In other words, the companies did not fulfill their declaration promise. After negotiating with the companies many times, the house owners chose to protest it in front of the Chengdu Housing Administration. Meanwhile, they used their cell phones to record the protest scene and post it in different short video-based social media platforms such as WeChat, Weibo, TikTok, etc. They want to use the short videos to attract the attentions of mainstream and self-media journalists and then force the relevant government, department and the companies to solve their problems. After the short videos of the protest scene were disseminated among different short video-based social media platforms, this case arose more and more public concern. More importantly, these videos successfully draw the attention of the mainstream media such as Tcent, Xinhua, Xinlang, etc. After the second round exposures of the mainstream media, the local and central government noticed the severity of this case. Therefore, the Chengdu Housing Administration questioned the real estate companies who breached the declaration contract publicly and urged them to solve the problems as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the Chinese Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development launched a nationwide special operation to the chaotic real estate market. As a result, the homeowners' problems have been solved. The last case is about counterfeit goods on Pinduoduo. Similar to Taobao and JD.com, Pinduoduo is an e-commerce platform that offers a wide range of products from daily groceries to home appliances for Chinese customers. Pinduoduo is famous for its team purchase model, which is typically allow customers to enjoy lower prices by joining a team purchase. In July 2018, Multiple short videos were uploaded by some users of Pinduoduo at separate times with similar hashtags or topics such as you get what you pay for, counterfeit goods, do not buy anything on Pinduoduo, I bought this from Pinduoduo on different social media platforms. For example, a customer posted a short video of the counterfeit smartphone he purchased from Pinduoduo. The customer thought he bought a genuine Vivo smartphone, a famous Chinese smartphone brand, in a low price. But the truth is that the phone he actually received was manufactured by a copycat named Vivi, but not the famous Vivo. The intentions of the most consumers just wanted to express their discontents through those comical short videos. The phenomenon of counterfeit goods on Pinduoduo was under the spotlight in that instant. Some Chinese mainstream media and self-media gradually criticized Pinduoduo in succession. On July 26, 2018, Pinduoduo was listed on the Lasdaq Exchange in Times Square in New York. In the meantime, the critical public opinions on the phenomenon of Pinduoduo counterfeit goods were boiling over. More and more Pinduoduo victims and even unrelated consumers join into this anti-counterfeit products event on different short video based social media platforms. They wanted to warn other consumers to keep away from the Pinduoduo, use their short videos to draw more public and mainstream media attentions to the counterfeit goods issue, and urge the public, media and government to consider furthering public concern questions. Where do these thousands of fake goods come from? Who are the potential buyers of these inferior products, etc. As a resultant force of consumers and media pressures, August 1, 2018, Chinese State Administration for Market Regulation stated that it required Pinduoduo to reinforce commodities and online traders' reveal, cooperate with the investigation of Shanghai Industry and Kermes Perho, obey the relevant law to run business. On the same day, Pinduoduo released an official announcement suggesting that Pinduoduo would cooperate with regulators actively and thoroughly rectify and reform its misconduct, including removing counterfeit products from its platform, blacklisting those shops that sell copycat products to consumers, taking videos, then sharing and uploading them on the social media has become an indispensable part of the schedule of the Chinese activists. With the rapid upgradations of social media and digital technologies, 
Probably one day in the near future, a group of disadvantages and suffering others could be reunited together through sharing the same videos they make, or even they can broadcast their experience on the internet in a sentence: "No video, no truth. More videos, more revelations." More and more consumers pick up their smartphones as weapons to fight against the merchants and the government departments in order to retrieve their legitimate consumer rights. And urged the government department to lay down clear and long-term regulations on specific markets.